Hey guys, this is Jim and we're going through some changes during week six now of our coronavirus pandemic and our shelter and home. And many of you guys are feeling the crunch of not being able to do your normal activities. I mean, you can't go out to a restaurant and sit down with friends or family. Uh, you can't see loved ones that you're normally used to seeing almost every day. Uh, you can't go to your workplace for many of you. Or if you can, you, you go during restricted times and you can't work with the normal uh, work pace and time and routine that you're normally used to doing. Uh, our lives have been disrupted. We're going through a change. And when we come out of this change, eventually when we get back to whatever the new normal is, it's not going to be the same as the old normal. Well, I wanted to relate something to you as I was reading in Joshua chapter 3, 4, and 5 this morning. Now, uh, the book of Joshua begins, of course, with the death of Moses. He had just led God's people in the wilderness for some 40 years. They've reached the, the border of the promised land, and Moses dies, and Joshua becomes the new leader. So the very first miracle that occurs is the Israelites are able to cross over the Jordan River on dry land because God miraculously stopped up the river like 20 miles upstream. <clears throat> so they get to the other side of the river. Now that was the first big change, crossing the Jordan River miraculously. So they gather their memorial stones from the middle of the river. They set up a memorial there in Gilgal. Gilgal means rolling or rolling away. And so now they're on the west side of the Jordan. They're into the actual promised land. And three other events happen in rapid succession. It was on the 10th day of the first month that they crossed over the Jordan River. Then God tells Joshua, saying, uh, all the males uh, in your camp during the time of the wilderness, none of them have been circumcised. So you need to consecrate yourself to the Lord for the work that he's going to call you to do to take the promised land, and all the males need to be circumcised. And so right there, uh, there's a step of faith. They needed to circumcise the males that put them in a vulnerable position militarily, uh, defending themselves, but they trusted God and they were obedient. So all the males get circumcised. And then three days after that, on day 14, they celebrate the Passover for the first time in the promised land. The very next day, and this is really interesting, the very next day after celebrating the Passover, the manna that they'd been used to gathering every morning, the manna stopped coming from God. Now, this is a huge change for God's people. Because for 40 years, they had gone out every morning, you know, right when the sun came up, and there was the manna, this bread from heaven that came down uh, at, from God to feed God's people during that day. So God was miraculously providing your, their food. And then uh, almost like less than a week of being in the promised land, the manna dries up. And now they're going to have to start gathering their own food. They're going to have to start taking the land. They're going to have to start depending on God, saying, God, you're going to have to be with me through this time of fulfilling these promises to give us the land that you swore to our forefathers that you said the descendants would come back and occupy. We're going to take the land and the man is going to stop because we can't just go out and automatically count on God providing the bread every single day. We're going to have to grow up and gather it ourselves. We're going to have to depend on God more in this new normal, this new reality that God's people had after 40 years of just uh, automatically knowing that that manna was going to be there the next day. Uh, so there was a big change that they were going through. They had to learn to trust God. We have to learn to trust God. God, I don't know what our employment's going to look like. I don't know uh, what the economy is going to look like by the time we get through all of this. But Lord, I know that you are our sovereign God. You're in control. You know what's best for us. We need to keep our eyes upon you and, and cry out to you for wisdom and direction and let you lead us, Lord, because if you're going to lead us, then you're going to uh, show us the right path to go down to where we don't just survive this COVID-19 crisis, but we actually can flourish through it and come out better on the other side, come out better on the other side in our relationships with our family members, with our friends. Hopefully you're staying in touch. You're staying connected. You're doing your part to reach out to people and think of, maybe you can even think of somebody who's lonely and who doesn't normally 
talk to people that much during the day and call them up and just say, how are you doing? Is there anything you need? Can I help you? And if there is a way to help and you don't have the resources, well, call us up here at the church and we'll do what we can to help. We, uh, we're going to stay connected. We're going to come out of this together and we're going to be stronger than ever. But just know that God's people have gone through many changes, big changes in their lives in the past. And as long as they rely on God, God makes everything turn out okay. I hope that encourages you today. God bless.